Yes. Hello, people. Welcome to Comic News with Duke and Manos. And Jamie. No, Jamie. Although she already <laughs> said that. Hey, yes. I'm Manos. How you doing? I'm I'm great. We should always introduce each, ourselves to each other in the show. That's not stupid. I'm oh, oh, sorry. That's right. I That's totally right. Uh, so, yes, um, we got a lot of news, um, but we're going to cover the most important thing of the week, I think. And I'm going to let you read it, Manos. All right. Now, normally we have a lot of fun here, uh, joking around. It's all usually in good fun. But uh, this time around, I want to start out with something a little uh, serious and uh, get off script here, uh, talking about uh, the uh, passing of Dwayne McDuffie. Now, uh, most of you know uh, that happened earlier this week. And uh, it was due to a uh, surgical procedure that uh, he went and uh, complications that occurred and it uh, passed, on, I, I assume, on the table, which is my nightmare, uh, frankly. Um, I, I don't know. Have you heard anything about what the, the surgical procedure was? No, we still haven't figured that out yet. Because uh, he was a fairly young guy. What was he, in his 40s? Yeah, and he was perfectly fine. Like, not even a few days ago, like, he was... Per- the photo in this uh, link here shows him at the premiere for All-Star Superman. He looks fine. Yeah, he looks great. It was probably uh, like it was probably for something really minor. I know that's the sad thing. If if it was just something that you know wasn't really life threatening, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, maybe some you know I don't know. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, you can, I mean, if there's a mistake, you know, you can die during gallbladder surgery. Yep. Oh, uh, I had gallbladder surgery once, and that was what I was scared of. It's like, oh man, I hope. You know, I hope I don't die doing this. He he died the day after his birthday. Yeah. Yeah, and that's... Also, that's... The, also the same day as uh, the premiere of uh, uh, the, 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 the uh, All-Star the Superman hit shelves. Yeah. Which, is, yeah. which is also, sadly enough, about um, Superman uh, getting things in order. Uh, before he dies. Before he dies. And I couldn't help think about that all the way through the film. Uh, that that thought did come to me. Uh, I I, well, I got it the day like in the middle of the day it came out, and five minutes later I heard he passed away. I just pushed it aside. Just, no, I'm just gonna leave that alone. Because if I don't, if I ended up not liking it, I probably wasn't gonna be happy. Yeah, well, I I, had, but I ended up loving it, but I did too. I loved it a lot, and uh, I just was really moved by it at times, and uh, I look back on his work and he I, I think he was a consistently good writer that uh, would just come up with uh, well I mean he was the the mastermind behind the whole uh, milestone uh, line and uh, the work he did on Justice League animated series is just excellent oh yes and uh, I uh, also you know, I also I also liked when he went on to the Justice League comic. Um, I think one of the problems was it was a little directionless. Um, and also, like before he got fired from it, uh, th- DC was doing so many things like he couldn't use the characters he wanted. That must have been frustrating because at the time the universe was kind of being run by Jeff Johns, really. Uh, so, yeah, like, and... what can I do? Like, Superman's off a new Krypton, Batman died. Like, he literally, like, in an interview, he said, it's like, it's like working with Captain America's crazy B-list Avengers, but without Captain America. Yeah. Like, he... Like, you constantly have to check in. It's like, well, okay, who can I use this week? Um, I think you still have Plastic Man and Vibe. Oh, great. <laughs> hey, yeah. um... You know, he used to work at Marvel, but, you know, I don't I don't remember what books he'd worked on. Oh, he was on Fantastic Four for about a year, and that was recently, like a few years back. Yeah. And, um, let's we see. We got his start in Marvel in the 80s. Yeah, as an as a editor, like a junior editor or something. Mm-hmm. I'm, 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 I, I'm reading it up. Uh, it's just sad to know he's gone, because he, 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 he created cool stuff. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna spotlight it at the end of the show. We're gonna have a little tribute. Yeah, well, we're gonna 
we're going to kind of frame this uh, for uh, for um, Mr. McDuffie. And uh, at the end, uh, you and I, you've got your pick, right? Yes, I do. We have both picked a, a piece of work that we enjoyed uh, from uh, Dwayne, and we're going to discuss them at the end of the show. So stay tuned. Uh, but now, let's move on to some kookiness. Oh, that's our forte. Yeah. We're going to move into kookiness I probably will enjoy. Um, they released the trailer for the uh, Green Lantern animated movie Emerald Knights. Um, I just want to say this. I never trust the damn trailers for these movies because they rely on the action part too much. Well, yes, that's how they sell. Yes, yes. Like, too much, though. Like, the preview on, like, the DVD that comes before is the one you want to pay attention to because you actually get a clue of whether or not it's gonna actually going to be good. But, yeah, it's, you know, um, Nathan Fillion, who we're going to f- mention again in the show later. Uh... I, I've met, I did a video on the movie. I I'm I'm gonna see it. I think it's gonna be fun at least. I I guess I'll see it. Rent it probably. No. Maybe rent, well rent it. Yes. 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 I I buy them all the time. I just want to have a collection. Buy a Green Lantern movie without seeing it. Well, I buy all these animated movies. I just like to have that collection. Yeah. I some may think I'm crazy, but I don't You're care. You're crazy. You're so crazy, Dustin. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why they sound like that or call me Dustin. Uh, yeah. uh, yes. Um, we don't got much. It's just that it looks like it'll be worth whatever amount of money I'm spending. <laughs> 14 bucks, 20 bucks. I don't know. Yes. Kilowog's awesome, at least. Uh, yes, uh, we're just going to move on to this. All right. Let's see. Just something that totally... Never mind. This doesn't matter either. Okay. Uh, we're talking no, about- I'm kidding. Okay. Uh, uh, this is about the Preacher movie, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, D- DJ, is that what his, he goes by? Uh, yes. Pastoro, uh, locked his deal to, uh, direct, uh, the Preacher movie. Uh, actually, okay, there's an update, uh, where that's a little up in the air. Uh, and he's the director of, uh, the new one, I Am Number Four, and, uh, Disturbia. So, you know, hey, quality. But, um... I enjoy Disturbia, but not because it was a good movie. Yeah, see? That's not exactly the tag you want on the poster. <laughs> Director of Disturbia, and I am number four. Oh, God, I just saw a bunch of people puke. No, 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 that's, no, you, you, your, your quote there. That's not the quote they're going to put on the poster. Oh, hooray. Disturbia, I enjoyed it, although it's not a good movie. <laughs> Duke Lewis. Shia LaBeouf was okay. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah. He's having root canal. I had root canal and fell asleep during it. Oh, oh, so is root canal better than Disturbia? If you have the same kind of insurance I do, it's enjoyable. Oh, okay. Well, then, not as good as root canal. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. He tweeted that he apparently closed the deal on it. Yeah. Okay, well, let me tell you this. Even though he closed the deal, doesn't mean shit. You know, uh, there's been several directors who's going to do this film, and HBO was going to do this as a series, uh, and I'm still of the persuasion that this is not going to get made because it's too controversial. I mean, yeah, uh, there's that's... a character who's the descendant of Jesus who is uh, retarded and pisses in people's face. There's a guy who has sex with chickens. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get this made now, right? That's right. Although, oh. if this director gets to do it, I hope Shia LaBeouf gets to play our space. <laughs> I actually know who that is. Yeah, that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, totally awesome. God. And in the trailer, they should like do the credit things where like you know all these people playing these characters, and at the end, Shia LaBeouf is our space. <laughs> Uh, yes, totally. <laughs> I I think a lot of people want to see this movie now. If that's going to happen, <laughs> if that doesn't happen, game over. But this if is it a does, hit if that happens, yes, totally. Uh, so we're going to move on to the next story. Um, I'm just going to read the headline: Help Nathan Filling It by Firefly. That's just fun to say out loud. Mm-hmm. Okay, I probably need to explain. Uh, yes, please explain. Well, apparently, um, let's see, 
in an interview, he was asked if he would ever return to the show. He would say, if I won the lottery, I would totally buy the rights back. And that's not the story. The story is someone started a Facebook page saying, help him buy back Firefly. <laughs> um, the only good this really did is, for some reason, they're um, syndicating it on the Science Channel in HD. Mm-hmm. On the Science Channel? On the Science Channel. It, they know it's not real, right? <laughs> That depends. Is it followed up by that show where Morgan Freeman's narrating? <laughs> I, I'll watch those two back to back. Uh, I, I don't know why it's on the Science Channel. I actually, let's see. I don't know if it's the the Science Channel we get. I know there's a Canadian channel that's like the Sci-Fi Network called Science Channel, so that might be it. Yeah. It, it's not clear here, but people just saw that like chunk of the interview and uh, started a Facebook page. <laughs> The only good is, like, people, there will be some publicity to watch the whole show. <laughs> God damn it, why? I, I, the sad part is I can say that, and it doesn't mean a lot to some people because it's so short. Like, God damn, you fucked! Shake my fist in anger. So, yeah, people just blew this one out of proportion. And not to mention, this page was uh, suggested to me five times this week. Yikes, so I guess you had to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, man, eh, why not? People are stupid enough to... to, to <laughs> Make he's not doing it. Like he 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 didn't ask for handouts to buy the rights back. F- the people are just being kind of crazy. He should go on Kickstarter. <laughs> yes. Hey everybody, I want to buy the failed TV series as well as the movie Firefly. Uh, I'm Nathan Fillion, and if you donate, uh, I'll give you like an autograph or something. I will. I will. Um. I'll say something really awesome, I guess. Um, <laughs> give me your money. ABC doesn't pay me enough. That's right. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we're going to move on to the next thing, something you probably wanted to introduce. Yeah, I uh, suggested this, this to you, too. Uh, the next Primal Paper comic book, uh, the small independent comic book company, is uh, Willpower. And I, I'll i be honest, I don't know too much about the... Uh, Background, except the the trailer looks really cool. I think. Oh it's, yeah. It doesn't. It it uh, has this feeling of uh, like uh, I think he's some kind of uh, genetic experiment and gone gone awry, and he's now the superhero willpower. Uh, I can't wait to see it. The first issue comes out in March, uh, so check out the trailer. And yes, it's it, link in the info in case you can't find it. That's right, and also uh, you can friend uh, friend them on Facebook too. Yes. It looks cool. Uh, I, again, I say this to all these things you suggest, but it looks cool yet again. Yeah, I'm uh, definitely going to... I'm going to pick up the co- comic uh, and uh, do a review. And uh, I'll, I don't know. I'll send, maybe I'll send you a copy of something. Do <laughs> you want some nice. uh, primal paper stuff? I'll, I'll send yeah, 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 yeah. Totally, totally, totally. And uh, if, yeah, if you guys go into the primal paper or Facebook or the Willpower Facebook... Uh, tell them you're from out of town and maybe want to order one. They'll see what they can set you up on. Yeah. So, one moment here. And on to our next story. Uh, they finally gave, gave us a date for um, Thor, Tales of Asgard. <laughs> it's coming out in May. Mm-hmm. Um, I have voiced my opinion before that I don't give a crap about this stupid movie. I don't want to see Teen Inks Thor. Yeah. You know what he looks like? He looks like He-Man. <laughs> exactly. I was going to make that joke next if you can come to your mind. Um, yes, this is probably going to suck because not a lot of the Marvel animated movies, a- along with coming out on a consistent schedule, uh, have been good. Ironically, the only real the ones I enjoy have the Hulk in it. Mm-hmm. Planet Hulk and Hulk versus. Um, It's loosely based off of Thor, Son of Asgard from 2004, if anyone really cares. Yeah. Um, I don't know. If I was a Thor fan, I'd probably like it. uh, Yeah, I don't even know if I'll, like, try and find this movie online and watch it. It seems so stupid to me. I'm like, yeah, I want to watch young Thor on his road to being less of a jackass. I totally want to watch that for an hour. (laughs) What's he doing in Smallville? (laughs) That's 
a good ass question. Uh, <laughs> All of a sudden, Superboy comes, and we're all confused. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, God, this would suck more if this lasted ten years. I know. Well, he's immortal, so, you know. Oh. Don't make this more nightmares for me. Uh, so, yes, now we... Because the thing is, people kept wondering uh, if this movie was ever going to come out, because they announced it two years ago. Yeah. I, ha I saw the... Pr I have the preview on the Hulk versus DVD where they talk about it. Oh yeah, I remember that. They had a whole like little documentary about how cool it was going to be. I still love the fact that the producer for that movie is like the most cowboyish Texan ever. Yeah. He ha he had like the traditional like Texas tuxedo with like jeans and a button up t shirt, a bolo tie, and a hat. Yep. And he was like, "Oh, I love them Thor spittoon spit." Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Like, I have no doubt this guy knows, because he sounded like he knows what he's talking about. It's just really weird to hear the most Texas guy ever to talk about comics. Yeah, what we had to do was respect the uh, North uh, mythology. <laughs> you, you know what You know what I did for a joke? I played the theme to Bonanza while he was talking. <laughs> People go find, uh, like, go try and find this preview and then play Bonanza over every time he talks. You will laugh your ass off. And then the sword of Sir da 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 bonanza. And bang 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 bang. Oh wait wait wait. How about this? How about this? Dun da 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 da. Asgard. Yes. Yes. Dun da 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 da. Apparently we've turned Asgard into a western setting with cowboy hats and everything. Okay, we're going to move on to a. I'm, I'm just, I just want to sing this. You can do the next one because it's another vague teaser, but All right. it's a it's a vague DC teaser. Teaser. It's a very bland green image. Yes, with Gollum in the middle of it. <laughs> yes, um, I, I, that's that's I believe that's Krona, um, the the villain that everyone remembers. Um, yep. Um, because he popped up in Green Lantern recently, and he looks exactly like Gollum in a robe. It's an image for War of the Green Lanterns. Um, it is a generic movie poster, everyone. Is this an animated film or a comic book? This is a comic. Okay. You know, the, uh, the army of uh, Green Lanterns standing under almost reminds me of Bill Sienkiewicz's work in a way. Uh, Did he do this, actually? I don't know. I don't think so. Because uh, Green Lantern in back looks a little too mainstreamy. Well, well, let me look. Yeah, it doesn't say who did this, but yeah, you're 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 right. The, the the Gollum guy there looks. He looks like he smokes a lot. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, in brightest day and blackest night, my precious will come to me now. I'm not Gollum. I just smoke a lot. Where are my Marlboros? God damn it! <laughs> Here, come give your Aunt Gollum a kiss. We're going to the mall where you got to get some new clothes. <laughs> I don't know why that was going to work. I thought that ended up being funny. You know, let's stop here because I could do that for like another hour. Yeah. Who who wouldn't do that for another hour? Someone with sanity, that's who. <laughs> so we're going to move on. Let's, before. Let's cut off before we do the gross aunt for the whole show. You you can you can do the, the song opening for the vague teaser. Okay. A vague Marvel teasers in color. <laughs> in color. Yeah. Apparently, we advanced in technology over the last five minutes. That's uh, right. Uh, I will do what needs to be done. Uh, um, the X Men. Oh, uh, and we have Colossus putting on the helmet of the Juggernaut. Yes, it's. These are those uh, those ads that come out every uh, day of the week. Yep. Possibly making himself more powerful and more unstoppable. Uh, because of course, or, it's, or look utterly ridiculous. Because when you're made of metal, wear a giant metal helmet. <laughs> because of course, uh, the Jagonite isn't a mutant. His power is derived from that helmet. Yeah, so, um, no one's safe. If you, if you live in a building, get the hell out. That's right. If he gets angry at, like, a taxi driver, he yeah. might topple a building by accident. You know what I think would be cool? It what? works on anybody they could give it to, right? Yes. 
Wouldn't it be cool if they put it on, like, Aunt May? <laughs> <laughs> I... She's so small, I think she can live in it, though. <laughs> yes, um, the other ones we have here is we have... Uh, it look like they're for every X-Men book. Well, almost every X-Men book. Uh, Uncanny has a um, generic kind of, oh, my God, they're coming right at us yeah. poster. Um, uh, Legacies, them standing behind a giant Kool-Aid spill. Yep. Um, and it, it looks it looks like a really bad uh, drug deal went down in the New Mutants one. Yeah, that doesn't look so good. And, uh, yeah, they got the guy from House Party hanging out in front of that <laughs> one. <laughs> yes. Thank God we got our House Party reference in. We need one a year. <laughs> uh, so, yes, these are... Uh, I don't know. I like the New Mutants one. It looks kind of like, oh, God. Crap's going down. <laughs> that's that's a good uh, kind of uh, <laughs> The other two, like, the, X, the X-Force one doesn't even look like things. Are, well, Nightcrawler's in it, and he died recently. Yep. That I noticed. Um, never and, uh, to return. Never to return. Yeah, we'll so, never see it, Nightcrawler again. No, as soon as he said never for return, he just walks in the room. Hey, how's it going? Damn. We were, we were just, we're not even done mourning you. Um, I left my toothbrush. I need it. You need toothbrushes in heaven? Yes. Uh, I went to heaven. That is so where I went. No, uh, in, I, I think the Juggernaut one looks cool. Yeah, the Juggernaut one does look... At least it has some kind of, like, idea of what's going to happen in the story. So well, who knows? This could, this could be just, like, some generic image where he doesn't even... He might beat up Juggernaut, but he... I don't know. I want to make sure he wears that helmet. Well, or I, or at least is tempted to put it on. Yes, he puts it on for a few moments, dances around, takes it back off, and goes on with his day. Or he uh, takes it off and makes Chinese food in it, and then, uh, <laughs> and then you know, <laughs> serves it up to Kitty Pride or something. Kitty, I made you stir fry. <laughs> isn't it, del- isn't it delicious? <laughs> Because that's what a Russian man does. He can make some stir fry. I know. So we're going to move on to the next one, which is more ridiculous than what we just said. <laughs> Colossus making stir fry. I don't know why that's hilarious. Um, Yes, apparently uh, some guy from Top Chef was featured in a Spider-Man comic. Thank God. <laughs> it's not Emerald, Manos. Oh, damn. You know, I hate Emerald. <laughs> I don't give a crap about any <laughs> chef on television. I don't care. Just show me how you make your damn food. I know. Uh, is this really called A Meal to Die For? Um, The digital comic, yes. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and there's going to go, be... Go by... Go to the Marvel Comics app right now and find this comic. I know. They're going to do a musical version. It's going to be Dark Meat to Die For. <laughs> That's the one with Venom, dark meat to die for. And the dark meat to die for with the stir fry top shift. You know, that kind of... With the stir fry. Oh, God. It'll be a great musical, although 50 people will be hurt. But, you know, for the entertainment... A lot of people will not live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Well, this outrages me. Why isn't somebody else from one of these reality shows on? Where is Tabitha Coffee in her episode? Where where is the face off comic? Yeah, we need to give those. Yes, that would be the most dynamic story in comics. That's right. We need a story out. with them. Oh God, we ran out of face makeup. Look, it's the Fantastic Four. They'll help us. <laughs> so twenty pages of them trying to go to a store and pick up makeup. Mm-hmm. I can smell the money right now. Uh, Alright, we're going to move on to the next one. Who's up for free comic books? Me! Me! Fantastic. Uh, here's the lineup of what the companies are going to be uh, throwing you on free comic book day, which is this year... Uh, well, so it's always the first May of... First, uh, first, uh, Wednesday, first, first week of May. The first Saturday of May, yeah. First Saturday of May, excuse me. Uh, we got a Spider-Man comic uh, written by Dan Slott and uh, Ramos. We got uh, Dark Horse doing uh, an Avatar Last Airbender, where I think that issue story will involve them 
hunting down uh, uh, the director. M. Night Shyamalan. Fun. No, that's the comic I'm writing. <laughs> Aang has a machine gun and everything. I have a twist for you. I'm going to kick your ass. I have a twist for you. Bullets in every part of your body. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, let's see. Let me read a couple of the other ones here. Sure, um, go for it. Um, there's going to be a uh, Star Wars Clone Wars with um, Darth Maul's brother. Steve Maul. <laughs> Steve Maul. The cool part is he's played by Mr. Krabs. <laughs> really? Yes. Well, that's the... Oh, man. That I love that. it. He's awesome. He's awesome. Clancy Brown's awesome. Yeah. Have you ever seen... Um, I'm going off subject here, but have you ever seen the show Carnival? Um, no, but uh, my friend Jesse, uh, Jaden Nova, he loves that show. He is badass in that show. I hear he is. I, will, I, I tried finding clips of him on YouTube, but they got taken off. He's actually scarier uh, than he is in Highlander. Shit, really? Because yeah. I I showed I showed that clip of Highlander where he's in the church to my mom. My mom was actively afraid. <laughs> Don't worry, Mom. He's not real. He's just a friendly actor. He's Mr. Krabs. <laughs> my mom gave me the coolest face to that. What? That guy's Mr. What the hell happened? <laughs> But, and we uh, got a uh, yeah. There's yeah, if you can if you can get your hands on some uh, DVDs or whatever of uh, Carnival, he is incredible in that show. I hear that show was awesome in general too. It, uh, it, it was. It was one of those shows that didn't get a chance. No, nah, there's oh, there will always be shows like that, and it sucks. Yep. Uh, what, what else is here? Um, Darkwing Duck. I hear those comics are awesome. The Darkwing Duck comics. Yeah. They're they're real fun. Um, uh, Green Lantern Special Edition. Yeah. There's a Betty and Veronica comic. Um, Kung Fu Pen- uh, Richie Rich comic. Yeah. Sports. Yes, because Richie Rich is totally relevant today. <laughs> and apparently he has a robot or something. Uh, um, yeah. Lock and Key. Like, you can see all of them on the link below. Uh, there's a lot of other ones that you probably won't care about <laughs> that did, aren't pictured. Did you ever see that Simpsons episode where um, where uh, Bart and Lisa theorized that Casper would look just like uh, Richie Rich, therefore he probably was Richie Rich? Yes. <laughs> and Lisa's theory was that he he realized the uh, futil- futility of uh, pursuing riches, so he took his own life. Oh, <laughs> I do. <laughs> that that one makes the the only Simpsons clip that makes me laugh more than that. In I don't know what episode it's in, but it has Lennon coming back to life in a glass coffin. Oh, God. He smashes it and he's like, "Must crush capitalism." <laughs> I just th- that clip is awesome to watch completely out of context from the episode because it's just it's just hilarious. You're just like I'm bored. Must crush capitalism. <laughs> you you'll have a smile on your face that'll last forever. Hold on. Okay, our next story is um, first wave crashes. Um, uh-huh. DC is planning on canceling the line. Um. Yeah. Did anybody read this? No. I, I I did read the first issue of the miniseries that started the line. And that was delayed to high hell. Yeah, I know. Well, I mean, hey, when you delay shit like this, uh, you kind of get out of it. You, it's kind of hard to keep up. And uh, that's too bad, you know, because I think, I think the original um, <clears throat> DC uh, Spirit series was canceled, so this replaced it. Yeah, um... And I like the Darwin Cook run. I didn't read the, the first DC. I love the Dar- Darwin Cook run. Yes, yes. Um, and uh, they replaced it with a team that just did a very generic job on it. So I stopped reading it. Yeah. Um, I, let's see. There, there's, only, there's like two series they'll be canceling, like Doc Savage and the Spirit. And I hear the Spirit was good. Um mm-hmm. Like, what was it? Shut up, Jimmy. Uh, you don't know a thing. <laughs> yes, my sister's in the background. Enjoy. That thing I um, never read was awful. <laughs> I don't know what comics even are, and I think they're awful. Uh, um, and Doc Savage got canceled. Um, I I forgot the series were going. I was actually kind of amazed that the series were still going while the ser- the mini was delayed. Not that I don't know if they have any tie-ins, like there's any mentions and ongoings to the mini series, but. It just seemed kind of funny that the uh, Doc Savage and Spirit ones were going while the miniseries just got delayed to high hell. 
too bad. There was a couple of really good uh, creators in that series. Working yeah, uh, uh, I really love the one shot that came out, like the the prelude with Batman Ducks. I thought that was cool. Yeah. Um, oh, wow. We have, we still have the trades, people. That's right. If you dare go and find them. Uh, I don't, again, I didn't read. I only read like the first few issues of First Wave. It just got. Re- I just couldn't wait forever on those issues, and I forgot. And I wanted to pick up the Spirit, but yeah. What are you gonna do? So we're gonna move on to the next story. You can do that, Manos. All right. Uh, last night we were taking stabs, guessing who Kevin Cosmer might be playing in the new Superman movie. Uh, perhaps for, uh, time for uh, the blind guessing is over. Um, let's see, because they're thinking like uh, Paul Kent or Jor-El, uh, Perry White. Oh, yes, I want Kevin Costner to play Jor-El. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's perfect casting there. Um, Kal-El, you have to go and stop the evil. Yeah. I like Kevin Costner, but um, versatile, he's not. Nope. Uh, let's see, so I don't know, I think Paul Kent would be a great casting for him. I, I'll even agree with that. I I don't I can't see him as Perry White for some reason. All right, no, not so much Perry White. Hey, you know, um, uh, Brian Singer originally wanted um, uh, the guy who played House uh, to be uh, Perry White in uh, Superman Returns. That would have been weird. Because mm-hmm. I know him so well as House. Mm-hmm. And, okay. and, and and it's really creepy watching him talk in his regular British accent. Are you done making noise, Jimmy? No. Anyway, sorry, you hear paper. Jimmy, I swear to God. Okay, sorry. That was worth it. Um, yes. Actually, Jamie is our researcher. Uh, she was just looking <laughs> for, she's looking for stories for next week. So far, she found nothing. Uh, week on that. Uh, good work on the X Men uh, story, Jamie. <laughs> Man, I said good work. What? On on being our researcher. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> oh, she also uh, does you... the uh, researching for Fox News. <laughs> yeah, they'd actually know they'd be doing way better off if they had her. Um, wow. Do you want to keep talking about this, Manos? I don't no, have a lot to say. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> We're going to move on to the next story. Um, FX uh, gives the Powers uh, pilot the green light. In a related story, Manos says, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because, I'm so happy we reported that. <laughs> yes, I love uh, Powers when it first came out. Now, granted, I'm not reading Powers right now because I kind of drifted away from the series. Uh, but the first couple of years, I think, are excellent. Uh, I love the uh, the characters of Walker and Pilgrim. Uh, so I'm really excited. And you know what? They were talking about having Frank Oz directed as a movie a few years ago, which fucking sucked. And I mm-hmm. love Frank Oz, but directing Powers was not going to be a good thing. Uh, wow. I think he wouldn't have taken it seriously. I think he would have done it campy, and I don't think he would have done it. Yeah, I don't think he was the right director for the job. Uh, and now that FX is doing it, and that gives me an idea of what kind of show we'll be seeing, maybe something in the lines of, of Justice. Mm. Uh, is it ju- uh, Justified? Justified. Uh, oh, I love that show. Wouldn't it be cool if Powers was kind of done in that kind of spirit? Totally. Oh, I know. Because uh, they're talking about Walking Dead here. Which, you know, that's what's so fucking cool about Walking Dead being a hit. This that... kind of success breeds imitators. So they go, hey, that's an independent comic that did really well. Uh, what else is laying around? So here we go. Uh, I totally want to see this. And uh, I'm looking at this link here, and one of the commenters suggests uh, Katie Sackhoff would be a cool uh, pilgrim. And I really agree. I would, I'm would. i all over that. I'm, 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 I'm loving the one that said about effing time. Yeah, I agree. Well, that's my feeling, yeah. Wait a minute, that said Manos, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, I want to get into the trades. I, I really do. Uh, my shop doesn't have them. Yep. I need to order them and the I need to ask them. The first couple are just amazing. I... I really enjoyed the first few years of the series a lot. And I love Dina Pilgrim. And she's a, a lot qu- like she's a lot like a character I would write. So I have a question, uh on a on a, 
Sure. How do you want them? How how much do you want them to follow the comics on the show? Well, I mean, Bendis writes in such an episodic way. Um, uh, it would be good if they followed it, you know, for the most part. Now, of course, you can you can drift away, you know, because it's your version of the story. Because that, that's what a lot of people think the success of Walking Dead is that they don't stay a hundred percent faithful and make it its own. Mm-hmm. I, I, I was. I had an intelligent question to ask, so I figured I'll ask you. <laughs> and there you go. Uh, I'm intelligent. I think. Uh, I think there's enough to follow it. Uh, although they'll probably have to deviate from time to time. But uh, yeah, because if, if that series is, is like a total of like 50 issues long, isn't it? Like something after you combine all the series together. Oh yeah, I know. I mean, because it originally started at Image. And then he went over to his own kind of imprint, um, what is it, Icon? That's the Marvel imprint. Yeah, the Marvel imprint. Uh, so I think there's been a couple of series, uh, but it's been basically continuing yeah. all the while. But, uh, yeah, I'm all about this. Just just have to get the quote from what he said earlier, everyone. That's That sums it up. <laughs> so our, our final news story is G.I. Joe has a director. Yay. He brought us the first two Step Up movies. Yeah. That means he's going to work great with Channing Tatum. Oh, my God. This is going to be such a perfect marriage. Oh, yes, because Channing Tatum, I believe, was in one the first movie, the first Step Up. <laughs> I don't know how you make that decision. I do not know how. <laughs> I know. Well, you know, that's like, you know... <laughs> Like like back in eighty nine, instead of Tim Burton, maybe if they'd given Batman to the guy who directed uh, Break and Two Electric Boogaloo. Oh, <laughs> uh, I can't wait! I, I can't wait, you know, to see uh, you know Cobra Commander in this. Then <laughs> you got saved. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, um, yes, and um, to, to prepare yourself, Manos, because your ears are going to hurt. This is by the same guy who directed the Justin Bieber movie. <laughs> okay, well, calm down. Breathe, breathe. For those of you I'm listening... <laughs> For those of you listening, that wasn't me reacting. <laughs> Uh, sure. Uh, <laughs> she she's still bummed because that movie's not in town. Uh-huh. She was so bummed because they were gonna go to that today. Uh-huh. <laughs> and and then, and then last night I found oh it's not even playing in town, mom. My yeah. mom was like, thank God. I'm sorry, Jamie. Oh. Yes. Oh, yes. So now that you people have been exposed to whatever that was back there. Uh, <laughs> Um, we're, we're done with the news, and now we're going to move on to something special here. And, and now the thing we, uh, I've kind of been talking about it on Twitter and stuff. Uh, we're going to tell you a work by Dwayne McDuffie in honor of his passing. And Manos, you have the honor of going first. Sure, thank you. What I wanted to talk about was a comic book that he had done, because um, that's a, where he got his start. And he never really left comics, so I definitely wanted to focus on that. And I wanted to focus on the Milestone, the, uh, the Milestone uh, universe. Uh, particularly my favorite uh, series uh, from him in the Milestone books was Static. I uh, also loved Icon and his sidekick Rocket, but Static really was the star of this uh, universe. And uh, I'm going to go with uh, issue one. Uh, now, issue one was not only written by uh, Dwayne McDuffie, but also uh, Robert L. Uh, Washington III. And uh, John Paul Leon is the uh, penciler in the uh, book. Now, I will say one thing about the uh, the penciling. The penciling is great. It uh, almost reminds me a little bit of John Romita Jr. and Rick Leonardi, and uh, has a real great detail to it. and does feel very early 90s. Uh, the story introduces very sharply um, Static uh, in his element, uh, defending a young girl from these uh, street hoods uh, at an arcade. 
Uh, the dialogue is just wonderful and kind of diverges uh, from, I think, standard superhero dialogue at the time. I think it fits in kind of now. And maybe now, maybe this might feel a little heavy-handed here and there. But, uh, boy, it really did stand out. And I think that's maybe why DC wanted to do uh, Milestone as sort of an Im- uh, a separate imprint. Uh, because, you know, there's some slight, uh, you know, perverted jokes here and there, uh, especially when the high schoolers get together and start talking. Uh, of course we're all like that. Of course you're all like that. Um, you yeah, come on. But, uh. No, we, we really are. <laughs> I know, I know. We weren't that <laughs> different in the 80s. Yes, yes, yes. But, um, let's see. Uh, he's got his mom, you know, always on him and his sister, and, uh, his dad doesn't make an appearance in the issue. Um, of course, the girl in question that he saves is also the girl he's trying to hook up with, so he's kind of watching out for. Her. Um, uh, and of course, the issue ends with him being confronted by uh, another villain, uh, Hot Streak, who is sort of, you know, the uh, leader of this gang, and they're, you know, jumping into, you know, the school with, uh, you know, guns, and you know, being very threatening. It's 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 a very uh, modern take. Well, I mean, of the '90s, but you know, it's Spider-Man in a ghetto. And uh, it's very lively written, and I love it. This was easily my favorite. And you know what? I was just thinking about this earlier today. I was, I was rereading it. I haven't read this issue in years, probably since 94. And mm. I really missed it. What a great comic. If you can find Static Number 1, either as a solo issue uh, or maybe in trade, I'm sure. Um, it, it, I... There is the trade. Um, they reprinted the miniseries Rebirth of Cool, and they have the first four issues of the series in there of the main ongoing. Excellent. Uh, I don't know if it's still in print, but if you can find it. I'm sure you can find it online somewhere. But if you really want to kind of take a moment to appreciate and celebrate uh, Dwayne McDuffie's work, uh, that's a great place to start. I'm looking at the cover. He has the coolest costume ever. Isn't that a great costume? I love the fact that he has a um, Malcolm X uh, cap. Yeah, I I love the ball cap. It it, it just makes it look so cool. Mm-hmm. It's a great. And he he wears a mask and the cap. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? I agree. And yeah, I didn't even get to talk about his powers, his static electricity powers, which he can. Uh, he has a taser punch, which can punch people and give that same kind of electric shock you get from a taser gun. Uh, he can fly around by jumping on like some kind of metal object and using his sort of like a green goblin glider. And in this issue, because he's just, you know, you know, a, you know, a teenager, you know, he has a trash can lid and, you know, he flies around on a trash can. Oh, uh, and in the animated series, he, his friend came up with some kind of disc, which I think he eventually got a disc like that in the comic. Yeah. But, you know, uh, this is, yeah, I mean, this is basically if Spider-Man had no money for real, <laughs> he'd be, you know, kind of this guy. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I really enjoy that series. I'd love to see Static make a comeback. Um, well, we have the ongoing coming out, and good. Yes, I really hope that's going to be awesome. You know uh, who's writing it? Um, Felicia Henderson. Oh yes, yes, yes. That's right. I can't wait to see that. Yes. Um. So, uh, did you get everything you wanted to, out of the way? Yeah, done. Yes. Okay. Well, we're we're going to move on to mine, and I decided to go with an episode of Justice League. Mm-hmm. And I think I I picked the funnest episode of the series ever. It's um, the Wunsch and Future thing. <laughs> it, it's the two-parter where they travel through time. Yeah. Also, that episode is so goddamn fun. Yeah, it's also featuring that. It is so much fun. I have it on DVD. Uh, one of the uh, animated um, DC movies has them as a, as a kind of bonus episodes. Um, okay. Both parts feature the following. Robots on robotic... No, robot cowboys dressed up in cowboy clothes. Cowboy gangsters on robotic pterodactyls with <laughs> laser guns. That's only the first part. In the second part, they fight a robotic joker gang and a woolly mammoth. It is the funnest episode of anything ever. <laughs> I, 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 I'm sorry if that, I kind of geeked out there. Um, but I looked through all the episodes of Justice League he wrote, and as soon as I saw that on there, I, I, when I finally noticed on the list, I knew I had to choose it. It is one of my favorite episodes. It's so much fun. And it, 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 
You have Cowboy Batman in it. <laughs> I, love like, that, I, I love that exchange uh, Bruce Wayne has with um, Jonah Hex, where he's um, figured out that they're time travelers. Mm-hmm. And he's like, he's like, yeah, I've done some time traveling myself. Oh, no, you know, he said, I've had an interesting laugh. Oh, yeah, that, that, that. I, I just saw it like two nights ago, too. God dang my memory. Um, Yes, I, I, I have trouble trying to figure out what part's better. The first part's just... It just goes out there within, like, the first ten minutes. Oh, you know, oh, God, you know what I really love in that episode? What? Is when, um, is when John Stewart is briefly replaced uh, by Hal Jordan. <laughs> yes, I thought that was, That's the reason why it's on the Green Lantern First Flight DVD. And it's so funny, because everybody looks at him, and he goes, and Hal kind of just, like, figures out, oh, you know. Another time shift. I'm up to speed, don't worry. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then when he changes back. Mm-hmm. Static's like, make up your mind. <laughs> like there are one liners in here that are great. Um, towards the end where they're traveling through the time portal, Green um John Stewart and Batman are there. John Stewart's like, It's a universal law, you can't see the creation of time. Batman's like, write him a ticket. <laughs> oh it, 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 it's just awesome. Like you have cowboys and I love the fact that um not only does the bad guy take the guy's time travel belt and steal weapons. He picks up an army of robots, and he dresses them up. Yeah. They have outfits on. And the second part's awesome, because um, you see that he's gone mad with power, and he has, like, all the artifacts everywhere in the future. And also, I love the fact that he gave the fat robot a weird, like, roll ball instead of legs. And, a, and Darth Maul's lightsaber. Yeah. Like, I'm not talking about... Like, let, me, let me explain the plot of it. Um... If you this can. guy, if, if I can, I, I think I can. The story is this guy who's a loser has made a, a time travel suit. Um, Kronos, uh, he's from the comics. Uh, he 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 has the worst life ever. He uh, doesn't have a job, and his wife hates him. So he decides to do the wise thing and run off in time from his wife. Don't we all have that wish? We could just travel back in time and take Batman stuff. And he, and he goes because he's been pressured to actually do something with the time machine. Like, all you're doing is stealing useless crap. Fine, I'll go steal something useful and it won't get me in trouble. Something from the Justice League. Yeah, sure they and, and, with it. Yes, yes, yes. And, he, and of course they catch him because, you know, the Watchtower has a security system. <laughs> Who thought that would happen? And they follow him and then they end up in the Old West where... uh the, the, I love how they play with the time travel thing on how, like, he's been, like, he was in the Old West for months, and they literally were there for, like, five minutes and find him in a, in a cell. Yeah. Yeah, he kind of took it from me. And also, our main villain has a gun with other guns attached that pop out, and it looks like a spider. Yeah. It looks like and, that gun, though, that um, was in that, um, uh, what was that animated film with the villain with the children that just came out? Uh, Despicable Me. Despicable Me. <laughs> he stole it from that guy. Uh, and um, then and then they uh, follow... The guy escapes and they follow him into the future where apparently uh, d- he's destroyed the timeline somehow. I can't imagine why. Stealing the Titanic? That can't go wrong. <laughs> and he hires the Joker gang from Return of the Joker. And and, and the one... The, the two that are twins have the ability to clone each of themselves. <gasps> I love how they're both named Dee Dee and they address each other by name. What should we do, Dee Dee? I say we stab him, Dee Dee. <laughs> you know, yeah. I was like Dexter. Dexter's Labrador. Shut up, Jamie. Do you know who they? Uh, do you know who plays uh, the Dee Dee twins? Uh, Melissa Joan Hart. Yeah, very good, very good. Your geek status is still confirmed. Yes, actually, the the, the funniest part is when I went to rewatch this uh, recently. Jonah Hex is played by Adam Baldwin. Wow. Uh, and I, I knew that, like, I, I read that somewhere, but when I listened to him, I'm like, is that Jane from Firefly? Because he uses the same, like, kind of, like, country voice he does when he does Jane. I'm like, holy crap, it is! <laughs> and, and also the funny part is he plays Hal Jordan for those two, se- those two minutes where he's in the show. Yeah, doesn't he play Batman in, uh, the Crisis cartoon? Um, no, that, that, that was, Will, that was Billy Baldwin. Oh, oh excuse me, so, sorry. I mean, can, Damn, he's I he's not even related to them, to too. That must be offensive to him. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, it, 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 it's fun. Go find it. It, it, 
it doesn't really amount to anything in the end. It literally just restarts because it's time travel. And they're like, um, we're the only ones who remember anything, huh, Batman? Yep. Well, well we want to have some lunch? They literally just go on with their lives. Well, actually, it does kind of get referred to uh, later because uh, John Stewart meets his son, who is the son of him and Hawk Girl. Well, in that episode, yes, but uh, so that does mess with him, like later. Yeah, yeah, yeah that does come up. Uh, I also love that too. I'm like, Dad, like, sure, why not? <laughs> they could just say he's the, he's the son. <laughs> they created him beforehand. They probably thought that was clever. Also, when um. Uh, uh, Batman, like Bruce Wayne in the future, is essentially uh, um, Clint Eastwood. <laughs> he just beats the hell out of the kid. They don't show it, of course. Yeah. But they're like, oh, that's not interrogation. He, and then it cuts to black where, he, like, before he raises up his cane. And then they cut to him going, I told, I told you everything. Don't do it again. Oh, and that's funny. Also, um, Bruce Wayne gets to meet himself in the future. Terry, Terry McGinnis. Oh, great. What is it called again? Stereo. Yeah. He hears their voice. I love I love how Bruce says, I, I can't believe I made it this long or something like that. Yeah. And, he's like, I, and, and then, like, future Bruce says something like, I can't believe I'm whining or something like that. <laughs> I think. Uh, it's... Just go find it. it is, he definitely had so much fun writing this episode. You, you, you can't... You can't look at the fact that you wrote down cowboys and robotic pterodactyls and then say, eh, I regret that. <laughs> you were having so much fun coming up with that if you wrote this. Yeah, I mean, how often and, do you see cowboys on top of robotic dinosaurs anyway? Or or robotic clown gangsters. <laughs> and it, 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 it's just lots of fun. Go find it, uh, it please. I, I it is, it is I think it's one of the greatest episodes of the show just because it's so much fun. I, I kind of wish he did that more in the Justice League series. Just have wacky time travel stories if you can't do anything else. That's right. Uh, just, just just do that. Uh, so that was... Uh, those were our things that we suggest you go see. Um, R.I.P. Glenn McDuff. You will be sadly missed. Yeah. you uh, You definitely left us too soon. I think... I, I think he was really starting to uh, explode all over. Actually, um, he was just he was just always there for a while, and I'm I'm just very I'm saddened. Yes, um, he he's he's up there pounding around with Jack Kirby. Uh, that's all we have, folks. Thank you for uh, for all our silliness and our brief moment into seriousness, and, my and unfortunately her seri- her silliness. Uh, <laughs> goodbye, folks. I